Are you good now? I'm good. Are you sure? I'm good. Okay, because I do know, I feel it. It was a rather emotional episode. It definitely was. The tears didn't stop for like a couple of minutes. And every time they ebbed away, they just came right back because there was another emotional line. You have to give it to them. The writing here yeah. was really, really good. And Elizabeth Olsen sells everything she does too well almost. Yeah. Too well. I will say her delivery was just... It was painful. It was actually painful to listen to and look at. Yeah, but you couldn't take your eyes off it. And Paul Bettany as well. His mm. best episode for me was this one. The kids as well were good, but Elizabeth Olsen. Catherine Hahn as well, but Elizabeth Olsen. I know there's no Oscars for TV, but Emmys? She gonna win an Emmy? I hope so. I can't see how she won't. I can't see it. Hey, no render of the comic can. India. No nonsense here, but we don't have time to talk about the nonsense about nonsense. We got to talk about episode nine of WandaVision because guys, it was fully loaded like a jack of potato with beans, cheese and tuna on it. Now that might sound rank. It doesn't taste that good, but this was definitely better than that. This was a lot better than yeah. that. <laughs> yes. I will say, I was kind of surprised with how much the story ended well. We were expecting leaving off midway and having questions answered in the next Doctor Strange film, yeah. but it came to a, a sufficient close that yeah, felt did. right. Yeah, it felt like they really tapped everything they needed to go off of here, and they didn't leave anything unanswered that we as an audience needed to know. They really concluded it well, and from where the story was, I wasn't sure that was possible. But it made me feel in another way that while the ending was good and the last two episodes, even three episodes were very good, mm -hmm. I feel there was a lot of filler in the first five, six episodes and it kind of takes away from the overall story a little bit. But I will say that the way it ended more than made up for that. Yeah. Because it left the world in a place which is interesting, which is undefined and in which she can go in so many different directions. They've left themselves with all of the options, which I appreciate yeah. because it means that all the theories that we have will have to take a pause <laughs> until we have more information. Yeah, we can't do anything else. We'll start off with the start off of the episode because that just makes sense. So Catherine Hahn's character, Agatha, Agnes, whatever you want to call her, isn't just a witch. She's like a magic stealing witch, yeah. which is weird, but <laughs> which is weird. Which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, it's something they added to the universe here, which I didn't think they were going to do. And that is essentially her extra power that they gave her. And it was shown in the last episode, but we thought there were all these theories. Is it yeah. Mephisto? Where's mm -hmm. she getting this power from? It's just her power. Yeah. I, well, actually, I think it's not just her power. It's she said that she read about Wanda in the Book of the Damned, mm. right? So this isn't power that regular witches should have because it's, there's something inherently evil about it. That's why her mother was so angry. Yeah. So they've given her this power, but in fact, she's taken this power for herself yeah. and that's what sort of makes her the bad guy. Yeah. And Wanda just leveled up in this one. That song, Level Up. Yeah. I don't like the song, but my point is the leveling up was going on here and she basically assumed her ultimate form. Yeah. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Wanda here. Basically, what I'm saying is we got Scarlet Witch. We got Scarlet Witch. So if they ever do a season two, it's going to be called Scarlet Witch. Guys, guys, when it happened... <laughs> We were jumping off of our seats. Yeah, yeah. We were so excited. Just for the realisation that she really is the Scarlet Witch and she's tapped into that. And also, the look. Yeah, the look was good, man. Guys, they've done such a good job. The styling was so, so interesting because they kind of took some aspects of her suit from the second Avengers film. Right mm. at the end where Ultron's been defeated, her suit there looked like an incarnation of this suit. Mm. She basically made the suit the way she wanted to make it. Guys, it's so spicy. Yeah. She looks... You would not want to approach her. She looks too powerful in yeah. that suit. Yeah. With the crown, with, with her hair. It's just so... It was non-stop. It was non-stop. Plus, all the reveals in this episode to do with... Well, let's start with this one. We all know Scarlet Witch is one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel comics, let alone the MCU. But I think it is basically confirmed. No Brie Larson. You're wrong. Scarlet Witch is the most powerful character in the MCU, okay? Said here, Catherine Hahn said it, She's stronger than Doctor Strange. Yeah. She's stronger than the Sorcerer Supreme. Now, maybe Doctor Strange with the Time Stone is mm. more powerful than her. But without the Time Stone, I believe she is more powerful because she has the power of a, of a stone in her. Yeah, she said when she was talking to Viz at the end, yeah. when he was like, what am I? She was like, you are the creation from the Mind Stone that I have within me, so yeah. to speak. 
which means that she has access to all of that power yeah. all the time. Yeah. Which I can see why she is she's that powerful. Yeah, it makes, sense. makes sense. She has universal power imbued upon her, just like Captain Marvel does, mm. just like some other characters might have. Like I said last week, maybe mm. Doctor Strange, maybe Peter Quill, maybe Monica Rambeau, we don't mm. know. Um, but there were so many things in this episode, and I think one of them that, st that stood out to me more than anything else was the Vision scene with Vision. Paul Bettany, you slimy dickhead, all right? You did it. We didn't think you were going to do it, but I think you said in the last episode that this guy's uh, kind of a dick, and he's going to do what you thought he was going to do. And you were right. What yeah, did he do? I was like, he's been teasing this guy. He's been really wanting to work with this actor. He's so excited for it. I turned to Bay and I was like, he's talking about himself, isn't he? <laughs> And lo and behold, he was talking about himself. Oh my god. But the scene itself was very interesting because yeah. it threw it back to the original Vision. Like when yeah. Vision was born, he was very logical and it was that moment where he decided to stand with humanity, right? Yeah. In Age of Ultron. Yeah. He had a similar moment here yeah. even before Vision gave him his memories, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, and even the scene, the way they shot it, it was essentially a replica scene of the Age of Ultron scene mm -hmm. with Vision and Ultron, it might be in a church actually, mm -hmm. where they were having this conversation about why do you want to kill the humans? Why do you want to save them? Mm -hmm. And then they had that fight. This time the resolution came between them and Vision might be gone because Vision is gone. But Vision might be alive because Vision is technically alive now. Well, yeah, at the end, White Vision was like, I am the Vision. And just and it zoomed. <laughs> went away. He's gone. But that means he's alive somehow. Some power problems with him, I think. Mm -hmm. I think the fight scenes were cool, but I think there's one thing which doesn't add up, and that's the fact that White Vision, we're going to colloquially call him here, he could, like, phase through things. I don't like that, because I think that type of power comes from the Mind Stone, so that should not be able to be done. The laser thing kind of made yeah. sense, though. The laser thing could have been, like, a repulsor, like yeah. Tony's tech... But the phasing, when we when he first phased, we paused it and we were like, was he phasing or was Vision phasing? Yeah. But then there was a second scene and the white Vision was phasing and we were like, that doesn't make sense because he gets that from the Mind Stone. Yeah, he must. Otherwise, this is some ridiculous power that humans have. Yeah. Because they've given him this power, essentially. So I don't know where they're going to go with white Vision, but there might be some type of reunion with Wanda and Vision, like WandaVision season two. Kevin Feige said because of the success of this show, maybe a WandaVision film. Maybe a Scarlet Witch movie. He said... Oh, oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my gosh. And with this type of reception that this episode is going to have... Oh, my god. I think it's almost guaranteed. Oh, my god. I was concerned that there were going to be too many elements in this episode mm. and they weren't really going to get done and finished. Maybe Vision was going to fight Vision, then Wanda was going to fight White Vision, then Vision was going to fight Agatha, mm. and then the FBI is going to come in or then Sword's going to come in and it's going to be a mess. But they handled the actual structure of that fight scene very, very well. Yeah, it was very neat. Everything had its place and moment, and it all made sense storyline-wise with the way they'd set it out. Yeah, I was very happy with definitely, that. Definitely, definitely. But from there, there was the Monica moment. Yeah. Which is random, which is wow, which is crazy, which is her eyes were blue. Previously. Previously. Yeah. And then her eyes were yellow. Yellow gold. Why? I don't understand. We were watching it and we were like, oh, Monica seems like the sort of person who would jump in front of a kid for yeah. a bullet. I see that yeah. in her character, the way they've they've done her. Yeah. But when her eyes went yellow, we were like, have they made a mistake? <laughs> they can't have made a no. Not that big a mistake. We were like, no. nah, not that big, man. It can't have happened. But she basically, the bullets went through her, yeah. but not in the same way vision phases. Yeah. They went through her and then just flopped to the floor because she took in that energy, so to speak, that kinetic energy. Yeah. She didn't release the energy. No. She just absorbed it, seemingly, and kind of went translucent as well. Yeah. Does that not make her very powerful? Invulnerable? Yeah. Invulnerable. Invulnerable. That's a bit mad. That really That's is. That's a bit far. Like, I understand that you want to make her powerful and that she is a powerful character, but you're kind of making her, like... Wanda Captain Marvel level strength here by doing that. I don't know if that's a good idea because then eventually stakes in these types of things really, mm. really don't matter because 
you've got such powerful characters that the normal stuff doesn't even make any difference anymore. It's not even that. It's just that she can see um, energy, right? Yeah. That was what it was previously. And we were like, okay, that sort of makes sense. But now she's invulnerable and can take in energy. We don't see where that goes. But also, there was that shot where there was that single bullet that was passing her and she was aware of it in slow down yeah. time. Yeah. So not only does she have those sort of powers, she can not slow things down, but can move super quick to be aware of the small things. Yeah. Which makes or it maybe, even more powerful. Maybe that's only in relation to the energy around her though. So because that thing was moving quick, she was able to lock onto it because of the energy it was giving off, right? Because when she basically had that moment with Quicksilver, faux Quicksilver, she basically pulled off Evan Peters, what, a necklace? Because she saw there was some type of energy around it. And after that, Evan Peters was like, whoa, what's going on? Because it seemed like he didn't know what was going on. You have a theory that maybe he knew what was going on and he's actually part of this witch coven or witch scenario. Okay. And he's not just a regular bystander who got caught in the middle. Okay, Ralph, okay. Agatha was talking about Ralph the whole time. My husband, Ralph, Ralph. Yeah. And then she sees Ralph, the real Ralph, was yeah. someone who lived in Westview. Yeah. But when Monica ripped off the necklace, he didn't say, don't hurt me yeah. or help me. He said, spare my life. <laughs> Which is a very old-fashioned-esque statement. Yeah. You're not like, spare my life. You're going to be like, please, don't hurt me. Save yeah. me. Oh, I'm, I'm, those, I'm a good guy. One of those things, yeah. It doesn't work because maybe he has actually come from the past with Agatha. Yeah, maybe he's not the regular person that he was assumed to be from the last couple episodes that she was just controlling. Mm. Maybe he's actually involved somehow. Plus, we didn't really get any Mr. Scratchy moments at all. No. Where was this rabbit? Was this rabbit important ever? Or was it just like a misleading little dangling little line that were given us? Could have been a red herring. Could have been. I mean, literally. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been. If it had been red, then that would have been good because it would have really hit that one. I mean, actually, if it had been a red herring, we I think seen it. everyone would have been like, ah, uh, that's a bit on the nose, boys. That one's a bit on the nose. Oh, there was the scene when the boys and Vision started like, uh, disapparating, essentially. Started like going away because the hex was being removed. Mm -hmm. That was a bad one, boys. That wasn't nice. That, that was uh, that was tough. That was painful, honestly. But then Wanda was like, "No, I'm just gonna do what I need to and save my family once yeah. again." But she did. She did let all the people run away. She was like, "Run, go." Yeah. She she made the active decision when she realized that that she was hurting them, right? Yeah. Which is why she is not a bad person. Mm. She is a good person with misunderstood powers and she doesn't know how to control them. It was kind of a big storyline through the whole season and through her entire story arc in the MCU of her not knowing what to do with her powers. But in this one, we really got a look at how she controls her powers and how she learns so quickly. The idea was she basically was just doing whatever she could with her magic. When she saw how to use her magic and saw Agatha use her magic in different ways, she was locking on and just doing it once she knew what was possible. Yeah. Like with Agatha when she was flitting in and out of spaces, right? We were like, oh, that's an interesting one. So you can like disapparate, so yeah. to speak. And then Wanda just was cash doing it. And we were yeah. like, wow, that's a very quick learning. And then she did the hex. With the runes. With the runes. And then Agatha couldn't do anything. And we were like, wow, she's a very quick study. All she needs yeah. to do is look once and she'll be able to figure out how to do it. Because she knows now what's possible. Because mm -hmm. she's not taught magic she's not learned magic she just does what she wants to do what she feels she wants to do or what she feels she needs to do but when she's seen something is real and she can do it or someone else can do it she's like i can do that so it's just the seeing is believing effect really which is something which makes her more powerful than dr strange and i buy it i don't i don't think it's unrealistic that that's possible i think it's very true captain marvel not so much but scarlet witch I think she is stronger than Doctor Strange. I think the way they've laid her up and shown these parts of her journey yeah. and the fact that she knew nothing and now she we see her process of learning, I buy into the fact that she only needs to see something once to learn it. Yeah. But then at the end, there was that second end credit oh, scene. Oh, yeah. She's doing a Doctor Strange voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was actually fun. That was fun. That was almost... Again, there were a lot of carbon copy scenes here. Throwbacks to the MCU, but you don't feel like they're unearned. You feel like you're watching it and being like, oh shit, what's gonna happen next? Yeah. And with that scene, it was, when is he gonna show up? Yeah. When, when is Strange gonna be like, uh, what type of magic are you using? 
What's going on here? Yeah, when we saw the shot of the house, we were looking out. Is there a yellow ring? Where's the yellow Where's ring? Where's the ring? We, we where's the sling see, ring? Basically. Yeah. But she was doing the Doctor Strange astral projection mm. learning. So as she was walking around with her cup of coffee, her Scarlet Witch self was reading through that Book of the Damned mm -hmm. or whatever manuals mm -hmm. that Agatha had yeah. and was learning, which was super cool because she's going to become very powerful, even more powerful very, very quickly. Very quickly, yeah. But then at the end of that little scene, she heard her kids who'd unfortunately been gone. They'd been gone. They'd been got by herself in some ways um, because that was always expected, right? We said if she takes down the hex, they're gone. Vision is gone. But now Vision might be alive in one way or another. It might not be real vision, but it's partially real vision. So they might get back together. But the boys are essentially just a part of her. So they might be living inside of her still or inside of her memory. So maybe Doctor Strange 2 is partially her finding her kids. Yeah. Maybe. Thing is, it was a very interesting thing because it was only, it was like maybe two seconds. Yeah. And she was reading, reading, and then she heard Billy and Tommy. Yeah. And her face hardened and she almost like swept it to the side and that's mm. when the shot ended. So are they living in her head? Are they still fully around in her head? Or is this PTSD? Or is she hearing them from a different universe where they're still alive? I don't think a different universe. I think it's in her head, maybe in a nightmare realm, in her, through her. Because she didn't seem like the way they ended it, the villain. She doesn't seem like she's gonna go on some tyrannical raid from the way they ended it. If they'd ended it last episode or the episode before that, I would say, oh shit, she's gonna be the villain. But no, she's not. She kind of came to peace with it in some ways by the end of the episode. And because of that, basically, she can go anywhere. She can be in Doctor Strange 2 and work in that world and live in that universe without it feeling obscure weird. I was going to say, like, the emotional scenes at the end you as can. well. They were a bit... The emotions. They were a bit heavy. They were a bit all over the place because they made you feel all over the place. Um, was my eyeliner running? <laughs> yes. Was it running for more than five minutes? Yes. It was a lot. Come on, we've been on this journey with these characters. We didn't just meet Wanda and Vision. Yeah. We've known them for years, especially through the series yeah. and the way we've seen them come to life. It was just so... We've already seen Vision die. Multiple twice. times. Like, come, and then at this point, he kind of made peace with it. And instead of saying goodbye, she was like, we'll say hello again. Yeah. Just stop. It just hurt too much. The delivery was too good as well from everyone here. I mean... It's shocking, man. Those are powerhouses right there, Elizabeth Olsen specifically. But Paul Bettany, as I said, did a really good job with this episode. It was like a really heartfelt moment that I wasn't sure would land properly. But then at the same time, the relationship they had in Infinity War mm. kind of alluded to this type of possibility where you would believe and buy into that. Yeah, well, you have to think, right at the beginning of Infinity War, mm. uh, Vision was talking to Wanda when they were in, like, Edinburgh or somewhere, yeah. and he was like, what if we don't go back? Yeah. And that was him saying, let's go to Westview, because he already had the deed, right? Because yeah, yeah, that yeah. only happened basically immediately after. Yeah, within, like, a week or a month or something. Yeah. 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 So, like, he was always planning to settle down together, and yeah. it would, it just never happened for them, right? Yeah. But the fact that she came to peace with it and then kind of walked out of Westview with her hood up in the classic, oh, no one's gonna notice no, me. <laughs> Captain America, Black Widow type of scenario there. Yeah, I mean, that was a cool scene. Then she turned into her proper costume again. Uh, she's a powerful witch, man. She's a powerful witch. And also at the end, there was a scroll moment, which we assumed yeah. it was gonna happen. When she walked in, I was like, Nick Fury. Then she said, the person leading Monica in, I've got a message from a, a friend of your, your mother's. And I was like, that's a scroll. Yep. That's a scroll, all right? And it was a scroll. It was a scroll. And she's going to space. She's going to meet Nick Fury. And she's going to be in the Agents of Sword show. She's going to be in Captain Marvel 2, Secret Invasion, whatever it's going to be. So she's going to be an important character come phase four. And I think they're expanding the universe. This was a very good start to it. Mm -hmm. I think they earned everything with this end of the season. I feel still that the first couple of episodes could have been sped up. And maybe you could have got more story out of this season if you'd done it differently. But again, it was a very distinct show that everyone will remember oh. because of the way they paced it. Not that I liked the first five episodes, four episodes pacing, but the way they paced it was unique and everyone will remember it because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Also, the views that they've been getting. Yeah. The downloads they got for Agatha all along. Like, <laughs> it's, it's become iconic it's in banger. its own way, right? It's a banger. Agatha all along, slyly a banger. Catherine Hahn, she's got a, you know, billboard chart top 100 or whatever it is. I mean, mm. it's pretty crazy. But then it's Disney at the end of the day, right? 
Disney know how to make music if they know how to do anything. So, uh, yeah, Falcon and Winter Soldier next. There is also a, uh, a like, explaining documentary mm -hmm. of how the season was put together, and that's going to come next week. So, a lot of stuff coming. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there. If you didn't, if you didn't, then Wanda Scarlet, which, my ad, is going to come after you. Do they want that? No. You really don't want that, so just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been the original comic. I've been India. She's been Nonsense. You've been Graham. We'll see you next time. That's tomorrow. If you don't know, make a video every single day. You've been doing it every day for over 1,000 days, and we ain't stopping till we get to 10,000 subscribers. So do subscribe. Pop back again tomorrow for some more quality shitty content, because we're hashtag never not here. Just how it goes. Also, bring the because because means Nonsense. imp and jobby. Yes, it does. And we bring that. We bring a lot. We bring a little. We do a lot. We do a little. But we do bring the quality shit every single day. So see you tomorrow because we'll be back again once more. See you then. Skoodish. <laughs> <laughs>